We're here at WRC19, the World Radio Communication Conference, which is being held in Shama Sheikh in Egypt. And I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Arti Holla, who is the Secretary General of the EMEA Satellite uh, Operators Association and is also co-chair of the Global Satellite Coalition, GSC. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, let's talk a little bit about WRC19. Why is this an important event in your calendar? So, I mean, we've, we've spent the last four years preparing for this event, and it's really um, at a very crucial time for the satellite industry. If you consider what's happening in our industry over the last just two, three years, there's been so much innovation. Um, so a lot of the, uh, the, the issues that we're dealing with at this WRC will allow us to, on the one hand, um, optimize the use of existing satellite spectrum. So what I mean by that is introducing new satellite services into the spectrum that we already have so that we can share amongst different operators and be more flexible and uh, do a lot more with what we already have. But also, um, there is such a booming demand for new applications and new, new satellite services. And of course, with the Gigabit Society and 5G, uh, how are we going to deal with all of the data that needs to be transmitted? So that's another um, big issue for satellite. We're looking to access or to secure our access and make sure that it is safe to allow satellite operators to invest into new systems um, uh, to enable higher capacity services on a global basis. Now, GSC has got a, a stand here in, in a special part of WRC, which is an exhibition area. I wanted to ask you, what kind of conversations have uh, you been having here on that stand? I've actually been thrilled to be receiving quite a few regulators who um, approach uh, ISOA and GSC and say that, first of all, what is the GSC? What is this coalition? Because it's, it's new, it's the new branding um, of the coalition between seven satellite associations, of which ISOA is one. Um, but regulators have come to us and said, you know, we don't know what to do. We are we are told one thing by the satellite industry, something else from the mobile industry. Uh, for example, on C-band, what is it? How should we decide? That's really nice because it enables us to help them deepen their understanding of how spectrum is used, especially within their countries. Um, and one of the main questions that I ask them is, well, if you're going to think about uh, allowing mobile to access what has previously been satellite spectrum, you must ask yourselves, how are you going to provide uh, alternatives for the services that we are providing today? You know, At the end of the day, it's the user who counts, and they are relying on whether it's aviation safety in Africa or broadband for, for schools or for cyber cafes or, or healthcare or emergency communications. There's so many things. Um, what is going to happen to those services if the satellite industry is no longer able to provide them in the spectrum that we are doing so today. So that's the approach that we take with regulators is, you know, please consider all of the investment that's gone into this from the satellite sector. Consider, is there a replacement for the services that you're potentially putting at risk? And come at it from a pragmatic, user-centric perspective. Now, it's obviously, a Spectrum is a very finite resource. And uh, this conference lasts for about four weeks where everybody's... Uh, toing and froing and talking talking about these issues but at the end of the day people seem to come away hopefully with uh, the results that they, they they were looking for mm -hmm. do you think that that will be the case this time around let's hope so we've worked very very hard to come this far um, from a satellite perspective, we are very much about all technologies have a role to play. We are complementary. Uh, it is unfortunate that regulators often find themselves having to pick winners or they feel that they need to choose. Uh, and some of the agenda items indeed make it seem that way. Um, but we firmly believe that without satellite, there will be no 5G. Without satellite, we will not achieve the sustainable development goals and, and all the other missions and objectives that so many regulators have, but also that the ITU has. So we certainly believe that it's possible to accommodate the requests of different stakeholders, whether it's IMT, whether it's HAPS, whether it's satellite, and drive a win-win solution. And satellite comes very much into its own when it comes to emergency communications in, in times of disaster, I, I take it. Absolutely. And um, I think just back in October, uh, the ITU signed onto the charter that the satellite industry has with the United Nations Emergency Telecoms Cluster. Um, and in this year alone, it has been activated already twice. 
um, if you visit our stand, you will see a statement by the Mozambique regulator where in speaking about Cyclone Idai earlier this year, he said the biggest mistake that we made was to phase out satellite when fiber arrived. And I think that kind of a statement is, is very powerful and it, it really hits home and it, it makes you realize and it certainly made the Mozambique regulator realize that, gosh, we need, we need to make sure that we can cope not just with the ambitious goals that are driving us and wanting us to bring higher capacity services to all of our citizens, but that we are also equipped for times of need. And in the Bahamas, of course, there was a lot of destruction uh, caused by the hurricane there, and a lot of the terrestrial uh, uh, communications went down very quickly. Didn't absolutely, they? absolutely. And I, I would uh, be amiss not to put up, point out the ITU's role in all of this as well, because, um, of course, when you're bringing in satellite equipment, sometimes that's quite strange for, for customs uh, controls and so on. And the ITU, with its strong relations with regulators across all countries, um, for example, in Mozambique, they really helped unblock the equipment, uh, without which I don't know how many lives would have been lost. And uh, you mentioned ITU, what about the work of the study groups? How, how important do you think is the, the, are the study groups uh, in terms of their, their um, studies, of course, uh, their reports, uh, their resolutions, etc., and how, how does that affect the industry? They're fundamental. I mean, um, I think we celebrated the 110th anniversary of the study groups just a, a, a year or two ago. Um, but they, what concerns me a little is that sometimes they're quite overloaded. Um, their work is absolutely crucial, but at the same time it needs to be manageable. And for example, with the, the agenda item 1.13 that is being treated at this WRC, uh, the study groups were asked to study 33.25 uh, gigahertz of spectrum for, for mobile technologies, which is a huge uh, amount. And that's just one agenda item, and they were preparing for so many. Can we talk a little bit about uh, last week? There was a big, uh, big event, so the Network of Women event. Are you, are you involved with the Network of Women here? Um, to be honest, I haven't put myself forward as a mentor. Um, I, I actually could be could benefit from from having a mentor myself. <laughs> it's it's never easy to navigate a WRC, but I think this kind of initiative from the ITU is certainly a very very welcome one. Um, indeed, I heard comments from my colleagues that oh, I'm glad you're going to be interviewed because we've only seen a handful of women who've been interviewed so far. So I think all of these initiatives are certainly very welcome and, and good for our industry. I was going to say, because the gender balance here isn't exactly balanced, is it? No, it's not. But the ones who are here, we, are, we try to make our, ourselves heard. <laughs> <laughs> very strongly. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being with us in the studio. And uh, hopefully you will get what you want at the end of this, uh, uh, this uh, long uh, four weeks. And uh, we hopefully we'll catch up with you again at some stage in the near future. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks.